Welcome back to the channel, everyone. As you can see, I am smiling ear to ear because this is the 1st of June and we are off to what is probably one of the most exciting months of the year for me because of all the things that I have planned for writing, for the channel, just so many different things. So I wanted to kind of share that with you guys as well as you can see here, we've got the Duke with me. I'm actually on my way down to Peter's to do some work on it and to install some new parts. So I'll walk you guys through that in a little bit as well. But I also just wanted to talk to you about what's coming up for this month because I'm just so thrilled. Okay, all right, so so first off, this week we have three days of back to back to back of track riding. I'll be riding my R6, which I haven't ridden in like half a year ever since I got my RCAT essentially. The RCAT of course, the Duke, and also we'll be riding my Ovale at Speed Sports just to get some more practice in before the next race rounds. In 10 days, we're gonna also have the third round of the Texas Mini Grand Prix Series. So another endurance race, another four hour endurance race at Denton, which is north of Dallas. We've never been there before, so it's gonna be a new track, uh, more racing. And what's really fun is it's gonna be an evening race. The race starts at 5 p.m. It'll end at 9 p.m. So it might even be a bit of a night race, which will be really, really fun. And then the week after that, I will be back up in Dallas, in the Dallas area, to go back to Crescent for the fifth round of the CMRA series. I'll be riding with Ty Howard, who, who you guys might remember was the former pro racer, the professional coach that I worked with, um, I think it was like two months ago now, but we'll be riding at Crescent again. We'll be practicing for two days and I'll be racing that weekend. So more racing. And then the week after that, I am scheduled to be at Barber for what I can say is probably maybe the highlight of the year, which is to collect my next bike. And I am so, so thrilled to be able to share this experience with you. It is, I can't tell you what the bike is, but I can tell you that it is a very rare and extraordinarily special race bike. Uh, it's not something you can just walk into a showroom and get. And the idea is that we're actually meeting the dealer at Barber, you know, to take delivery of the bike, to ride the bike, to learn the bike. And I'm gonna share all of that with you. So that's, that's the third week of June. And the week after that, we'll be at Coda for likely two days, kind of debating whether or not I want to stick around for two days or just do one day, but I'll be at Coda uh, for another go at that track. So I am just beyond thrilled for this month. I mean, this is going to be so much riding. It's going to be exhausting, but it's going to be thrilling and really fun. And I'm hoping that with all this seat time, I actually get to improve as a rider as well. So I hope you guys are excited. Uh, I think this is going to be a lot of stuff coming out and um, I think it's going to be just really, really fun. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to keep driving right now because we need to get there safely and I shouldn't be looking at a camera while I'm driving. And I will be right back. And we're back. <laughs> Let's watch Peter unload the Duke. Now we're very scared because the truck is so tall. Um, it gets really, really, oh my God. Wait, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good, you're good, keep going. Oh my goodness. Oh. So, the, so basically the RC8C has an under scoop that goes like beneath here and the truck, uh, we actually ended up snapping it once because of how how steep the truck is, which really sucked. Boom. Sweet. Sweet. We're at Peter's now and what we're gonna do with the Duke is, first off, he's due to oil change because I wrote the crap out of it last time and we haven't done oil change yet. So always do that. So you got your oil filter, KTM parts, and then this, the power sent four stroke uh, SAE 10W50 is the, the synthetic oil that we use. It's the same oil that I put into the RC8C right there. It's really convenient because I could just buy the same parts for both bikes, which is very, very awesome. So you just got this in and this is the other thing we're installing, which is, ooh, oh, we got a couple different things in, sweet. Okay, so we got the keyless gas cap, which is awesome. And we also have the EvoTech radiator guard, which looks something like this. Boom. Our local track here is like notorious. You got, I think you guys can tell how rough it is, but basically you just get rocks and chips flying up all over the place. So you wanna get a radiator guard to protect your radiator. It, it, does, it can't get really cracked up. So got this, got the uh, gas cap, the keyless gas cap, which makes it a little bit more, a little bit more track worthy. And the final thing is, what I'm really excited about is this. So we have this KTM rear set kit, the power parts KTM rear sets. 
has this beautiful carbon fiber heel guard, as well as the trans saver, which makes the shift rod just a lot sturdier because you're just rolling through the gear so much. And apparently it's a weak point for uh, the Duke. So I got the trans saver uh, shift rod. Okay, let's get started. Let's do this. So oil change first and then all the other parts after. Boom. So sweet. Look at that break in. Dude, can you see any shavings in there? You should be able to see it on the magnet here. Cause there's a little, there's a, right there, right there. This guy. Oh, you can see it. You see that? Yeah, you can see it's a little bit dirty. So basically, remember we rode the Duke, like literally the first real miles the bike ever saw was on track. And that's just, I, I, I don't do like a casual soft break in. I don't, I don't really believe in that. Like every single bike I have, I like first day literally is on the racetrack. What I do is I we ride it on track first day and immediately do the oil change before we ride it again, right? And then, because all the bikes are for the track, essentially, what I do is typically every third, second or third track day, I'll change the oil. And then definitely every race weekend, we'll change the oil as well. You're gonna be using and abusing the bike so much and just revving the crap out of it, you should take care of your engine that way. So that's what I, that's, that's what I do. All right, so we're gonna wrap up the oil change real quick and then we'll start to install some of the hard bits, which I think are the exciting part of this. While we wait for the oil to drain, I do wanna kind of point out a few things about the, the Duke while we're waiting. So I think I mentioned last time from the ride video that these tires are freaking amazing. So these are the Michelin Power Cup 2s and I don't think I've ever ridden a stock tire that performed this well. Literally no tire warmers, just set some cold pressures, let it, you know, give yourself a lap or two to warm up and I was doing very, very, very good times, very comfortably riding in any advanced group for, for track day and that's just like your stock tires that come with the bike, which is incredible. Um, the other thing that really stood out to me though, and I'm excited to address this, is that, so remember we have these carbon ca carbon uh, fiber case covers like this, right? They look really, really good. They look super blingy, which is why we got them. But the problem is that the alignment isn't quite right. So if you see the shift rod here, it actually rubs against it. It rubs against it when you use the shift, the shift lever. So. Uh, that's why I'm also excited about getting the, the power parts rear set. So I'm hoping that addresses that and it lines up a little bit neat, more neatly. And the other thing is that when I was riding the Duke, the rear sets are pretty low, right? It's, it's a street bike. And so you're, there's plenty of room for your leg. So it's very, very comfortable. But the problem is that when you're going like through a corner and you're leaning, your outside foot is like, for me, I'm not that tall. So it's like barely touching the, pet, the, the rear set at all. So. The, the power parts reset will give us that adjustability and be able to weight my leg better on the outside peg. And you know, so that, that should be a lot better in general. And we'll have the, the trans saver as well, so it's gonna make that, that a little bit sturdier um, and the radiator guard. So that's what we're gonna do now. So let's jump into the fun stuff. So boom, we got a keyless gas cap, which is actually, I believe the same exact freaking keyless gas cap as on my RC8C, which is cool, but also a little bit depressing because the RCAC is three times the price of this thing, but look at that. It's really nice, actually. Yeah. So, a bunch of torques, bolts, and then uh, slap it in and we'll be done. Nice and easy. Boom. Oh, that's really easy. Okay, all right. It's just six Torx, Torx bolts, and then that's it. Oh, is it is it lighter, too? Can you, like, do, uh, do like, a little comparison? Oh, yeah, this is it's lighter for sure? Okay, all right, cool. Weight savings, guys, weight savings. Race bike. It looks better too. Like billet casting, oh yeah. Okay, cool, nice. All right, easy enough. It looks so much racier now. It's pretty awesome. This is, yeah, I think this is literally the exact same gas cap I've got on my RC8C. Nice. All right, so that's done and this is what it looks like. Ooh. <laughs> so you press in, turn, and open. And the interesting thing is just the mechanism on the inside. It's a little bit different than what, what like a Vortex gas cap looks like, but it's all the same, guys. But yeah, it's nice. I like it. All right, cool. So next one is what? Rear set or radiator guard? Radiator. radiator guard. So this is what comes with the radiator guard. You got the radiator guard. You've got this bracket um, for mounting, and you've got some bolts. So it should be pretty easy as well. But this is really important for us here in Texas. This is like the track conditions are so bad. You've got rocks and all sorts of things all over the place flying at you. And people have definitely like torn holes into their radiators. So just every single bike I have has radiators. All right, so 
I've been working really long hours these days, so I got too tired. This is really messed up, but Peter is gonna wrench. Sorry, Peter. So he's doing the rear sets now, and I went and got some food for us. So we've got voodoo chicken, which is like a, it looks like, like Japanese karage or like fried chicken with some sauce. And then we've also got two Vietnamese sandwiches. And this is now a mukbang or food eating channel. <laughs> We're not doing motorcycle stuff anymore. Asian squat. And you guys can just watch me eat because I'm about to faint. Oh. Raw. This crispy, savory. <laughs> A bit of some, some heat. Yeah, it's nice. I recommend it. The, the nice thing is Peter's house is actually, he lives like in the Chinatown Vietnamese area of Houston. So the food selection is freaking amazing around his place. I have to drive like 25, 30 minutes. And it's like 50 minutes of traffic just to come down here. So every time I come down here, I always try to get something to eat. Meanwhile, Peter's wrenching away. So radiator guard's on. It looks like a radiator guard. It's pretty neat. Yeah. It's the same um, radiator guard that I have on my R6 as well. It's another Evo Tech too. So that's done well there. Alright. And then these are the these are the rear sets that we're getting ready to install. It looks a lot racier. A lot more adjustability. Nice carbon fiber heel guard. Pretty heavy duty looking stuff too. So the rear brake side is not done. Look at that. It looks so much better than stock. Got a lot of just really, we're just gonna leave it as is. And then um, when we ride it in two days time, I'll play around with settings and figure out exactly where we want to position it. But now you got carbon fiber here, carbon fiber there, carbon fiber there, carbon fiber everywhere. Except I think some guys put like a carbon fiber shroud there too, which is pretty sick. And then thunder as well, that'd be nice. Yeah, coming along, coming along. New, yeah. Ooh, looks so heavy duty. Okay guys, so we're wrapping this up right now. Essentially, all that we did today, or all that Peter did today, again. <laughs> so oil change, so it's nice and fresh now. We've got our super sick KTM power parts rear set. Also flipped this up, so now it's using the GP shift, which is gonna be a lot better for track riding. We did not put the Rottweiler um, trans saver shift rod, just because the fitment was a little bit awkward with the carbon fiber um, guard here. So this is actually fits better than the original OEM position. So, cause now you, this actually clears it, so that's nice. We also got the keyless tank cap, gas cap, keyless gas cap up there, which is super nice. And then we also have the EvoTech radiator guard, which looks really, really good actually. And that should help protect the radiator from all the rocks and gravel we've got here in Texas. Yeah, the bike is coming along really nicely. All right, boom. This beautiful, beautiful machine. All right, so that's it for today. I hope you guys are excited. I know I talked a lot about all the different things that we're doing. It's gonna be such a fun month. If you guys don't mind, please, please, please make sure you leave a like, and also apparently it really helps if you leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. So leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you guys are riding. And if you have a Duke as well, what are the parts that you're putting on your Duke? Do you track it? Do you street it? What type of riding do you do with your Duke? And you know, just let me know in the comments below. It's always really fun just exchanging and learning what you guys are up to as well. So thanks so much. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.